Orpheus is the rarest of the rare, a film made for art's sake. Directed by Jean Cocteau, it offers evocative photography and a uniquely absurd tone. Nevertheless, for me, what makes it most interesting, perhaps, is that it is very self-indulgent, that it knows it's self-indulgent, and that it uses that self-indulgence as a core theme. Ooh, meta. Despite being the second of Cocteau's Orphic trilogy, the standalone story here is a loose reimagining of the Greek myth Orpheus and Eurydice. It's also at least partly adapted from Cocteau's own play of the same name, from 1926. The many versions of the myth feature Orpheus, in French Orphée, travelling to the underworld to bargain for his dead wife's resurrection, striking up a deal with Hades with the caveat that he can never look at her again, because nothing's ever straightforward, is it? Cocteau changes a great deal. Maria Cesares as death, or really one of many deaths, causes and ultimately rectifies the whole ordeal because she falls in love with Orphe. He is, after all, the greatest poet to ever live. Hades is replaced by a committee. Mirrors are the portals to the underworld. It's told through an increasingly surreal veil, and we're left wondering if the world occupied by Orphe is another purgatory on top of the one that Orphe has to visit, well before we get to the famous rear projection descent into hell. Or not quite hell. It all looks gorgeous, of course, from simple and effective camera movements to complicated and dramatic shots. The composition is always deliberate and highly considered, and makes great use of the black and white palette. The visual effects, some in camera, others in post, are inspired, and so much of Orpheus's visuals feel truly original. In some films that are beautifully shot, there may be one or two shots that stand head and shoulders above the others, and become that shot for that movie the type of shot they use for the background art on streaming services. In Orpheus, there are maybe a dozen of these. Jean Marais next to a mirror image, another one of him next to a mirror image, Maria Cesares with eyes painted on her eyelids, Jean Marais and Maria Cesares embracing each other in the bombed out ruins of a military academy, hands dipping into mercury, or of course, the schlep into the underworld. Dog for sale. Dog for sale. Dog for sale. You think they'd have built one of those moving walkways like you get at the airport by now. I think Cocteau's imagining of the underworld is interesting and very successful at inducing even more layers of a dreamlike tone, and the poetical back and forth of the characters as they consider their own existences is thought provoking but sometimes it seems incidental next to the parts of Orpheus that are really about Cocteau. Cocteau is clearly not just the writer and director, he's the author. He was 60 when he made Orpheus, and by that time was an accomplished filmmaker, visual artist, and poet, but more importantly he was considered these things. Orphe, in this telling, wonders if he is passé, and now that he's very famous and loved and has a big house, how could he not be? Cocteau introduces Suggest, a much younger poet who Orphe considers to be much better than he is, or perhaps more sincere, or perhaps both of these things, because he still has something new to say. With Cocteau casting Jean Marais, his ex-lover of ten years, as Orphe, and his then-current lover, Edouard Dami, as the potential rival suggests, there surely is a meta element here. I have to wonder if this isn't Cocteau confronting his own success and artistic death, his becoming part of the establishment, becoming old fashioned, losing his edge, but also accepting it in a way. To me at least, Orpheus's themes are obvious, but its meaning is not. 
A lot of the film feels autobiographical without any direct translations necessarily. I suspect Cocteau might really be saying something like, an artist fails when they succeed. If you say everything you want, you have nothing left to say. But saying I have nothing left to say is saying something. Or something like that. Maybe I'm looking too much into it. Maybe this was Jean Cocteau's way of saying, man, I'm old. He did cast himself as this old woman, surely for the laughs. But then again, I might watch it in another few years and think something different. Huzzah. And there you go. It's all very beautiful, but what makes it truly interesting to me is the psychology of the director, who, aware of the irony, makes a film that often proclaims that poets are kings of kings, the best of us, but at the same time that poetry and perhaps all art is cynical and meaningless. Interesting, I guess. And now here is one of my poems. Milk is the metal of cows. Mechanical mice eat twice, five times. Louisville on the front, blue jungles behind. We are the thoughts and dreams of sausages, sausages in the wind.